Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you do for us. Just so many things that would take the whole hour just to barely touch on them. Bless us as we study your holy word. Uh, help uh, these uh, slides and videos to make things even more exciting and, and make things come alive to you, uh, for to us. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, we will see. Stan usually does this for us. <coughs> we showed you maps last week until you're blue in the face trying to give a picture. Our basic thing we're doing today is Dan de Beersheba is what we're going to really uh, try to emphasize. Uh, last week I gave you an introduction to the land and many things. There's just so much to tell you about it. On my first trip to Israel, I was literally shocked. I knew it was small, and yet I didn't understand the topography. Uh, one of these Sunday mornings we'll put a, <coughs> a uh, topographical map on there, and you can see on the coastland, the coastland to the left, let me see Dor there. Now Dor is usually not on a lot of maps. It's an archaeological site uh, where actually some discoveries made, but just south of Dor, as you'll see in a little while, Caesarea uh, is just south of there. And this, of course, this was an Old Testament map, and Caesarea wasn't built <coughs> until Herod the Great built it. And then if you're in the plain, you see the word Sharon. I think it's on the, yeah, there it is. In the lower left-hand corner, you've all heard of the Rose of Sharon. This is one, this is the first plane you go through. Once you leave the airport at Tel Aviv and you make your way uh, north, <clears throat> we stay all night somewhere on the coast there and uh, frequently right there just south of Dor at, a, at a, where that's where the archaeological dig at Caesarea is. And you'll, uh, uh, I've got, I may have this too much today, but if you don't see it today, you'll see it next week. And, uh, but one, you, you see Mount Carmel there. Uh, it actually juts into the sea. This is where Elijah uh, had his battle with the prophets of Baal. Uh, it was a strong Baal uh, center. And so the god Baal, who, who was credited by the Canaanites as being able and unbelievers as uh, of Yahweh, uh, bringing the rain. And so we have that battle there in, in Kings. It will look at later and then usually <coughs> we work our way across to the Sea of Galilee from that little point there where the word river is in there jutting out to the sea at Mount Carmel because that runs it's, it's a it's a, a several hills tied together from there over to the Sea of Galilee northern part is only 33 34 miles it's really surprisingly small and there's a gorgeous, beautiful plain there, places like Megiddo and, and uh, uh, Gath Helper. That's where Jonah came from. He was a prophet from that little town right outside of Nazareth, which is not on this map either because this is an Old Testament map. And then we're going <coughs> to work our way up to Dan at the very, very top today and then uh, go, go from there. There's just so many things we want to show you so let's just get started so I'll just we'll just jump <coughs> to Dan first of all because I'm going to start out kind of Dan to Beersheba and then systematically next week we'll be going from stop to stop you see those beautiful walls there if you put uh, two or three if Keith and myself and another person uh, Curtis standing on each other's shoulders you'd get to the top of that wall that was all underground when they excavated and dug it out. It, it <laughs> we don't want you to fall, Curtis. So anyway, uh, the city of Dan actually developed in the book of Judges when a group of Danites moved. They were just west of Jerusalem. They moved up to this uh, place. And so now the wall, you, you'll see as we go through here, some of the scenes. Again, this is telling about them moving. We've all spent a lot of time with that, but they were uh, there uh, just north of uh, Judah in the area, and they moved up to Dan, way at the top. And on this particular map, uh, we don't have Beersheba, but we'll, 
show you that later on. As you are, it's one of the most beautiful state parks, and that's what they've done. They've turned all of these uh, uh, wonderful archaeological sites into state parks and with all kind of signs. A lot of signs are in metal. <coughs> and uh, anyway, Dan became very, very famous later on when Jeroboam I actually put a golden calf uh, at, uh, put, put a calf out at Bethel and then won it Dan. And he didn't want people going to Jerusalem to worship. And so as you walk through these trails, you have signs. Many of the signs you'll see during this uh, three-month a tour of Israel will be in Arabic, English, uh, and Hebrew. This particular part, that for some reason, I don't see an Arabic signs, all in Hebrew and English here. And this is simply telling about all these, as you walk along the trails, uh, all these signs are showing you, uh, saying something about Jeroboam's altar or something that happened in, in, in Dan. Here is uh, Jeroboam's altar. We actually found the altar that Jeroboam set up for people to worship the golden calf that led a lot of people astray. And so uh, this is uh, what's left of it. Uh, okay, so we'll just take a quick look at that. And, and this is a sign near the front. Unfortunately, the, it didn't come out very well. <coughs> In Israel... There's not a lot of fresh water. There are many, many springs. Uh, the Sea of Galilee is fresh water. The Jordan River, of course, is fresh water. But, of course, the Mediterranean uh, is not, and uh, the Red Sea at the other end is not. Uh, so water is very, very precious for them. This is the stream at Dan. And <clears throat> what's really significant about it is the fact there are three streams that feed the Jordan River, one coming out of Dan, one coming out of Caesarea Philippi. Uh, this is simply called usually the Laish Spring because it used to be called Laish, and it cha they changed the name from Laish to Dan. It's sometimes called the Dan Spring, the Dan River. You don't realize how fast that water is moving. They actually have races uh, in there in a place where it's wider. So this branch and the branch from Caesarea Philippi and the branch a branch comes out of Lebanon, and those three unite and form the Jordan River in Galilee. <clears throat> so I'm just going to show you how much water. The springs, several springs, uh, and this place has just got water everywhere. This is one of the trails we take. Uh, <clears throat> some of you know, uh, uh, remember Emma Sue Miller, uh, her husband Park, they were walking along one of these trails that, uh, by the river, and uh, Emma Sue lost her balance and went tumbling over, and fortunately was saved by some thorn bushes, the bad thorn, they were thorn bushes, and a couple of the college students jumped up and grabbed her. And so we named it from, from that point on, and whenever I showed these slides uh, where she went to church uh, over at Luna Lane, we called it Emma Sue Falls. Emma Sue Falls, so with all the water there. You have to stop think about that for a minute. But she always got a kick out of that whenever she was around. I was sh showing the, the slide presentation. Uh, this is a, a picture from up above. You really can't see it as well as we hoped you would. Here is, <clears throat> we're going to show you the, the Dan in the time of the kings of Israel, but this is an earlier time. Uh, in the book of Genesis, when uh, Lot is captured by these uh, uh, raiding parties from four different kings of the ancient Near East, they would send raiding parties and they captured Lot. And when Abraham found out about it, he took 318 of his young knights, born in his household, and went after these people and found them, caught up with them at Dan. This was the Dan in the time of Abraham. And then later, it, the city is, this is on the edge of the current archaeological site. And so, they, uh, so this is the oldest part of Dan from the time of Abraham. It was the actual gate. And then this is simply some archaeological shots. Here is a wonderful picture. Uh, 
the mountain behind, as you see labeled, is Mount Hermon, 9,000 feet high. It is the tallest mountain touching Israel at all. And uh, the uh, tell, you can see the wall up front here, that's like three people high, if you, like I say, standing on the shoulders. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just a beautiful area. <coughs> You are from this side here, you are about 30 miles from downtown Damascus. Now think about that. 30 miles from downtown Damascus. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, and, and as this is one put in by, slide put in by Stan, uh, and this is the way it is. When we go, the trips usually last from, some of them are nine days is about our shortest up to two weeks. We've actually been in Israel two weeks. We usually have in my, uh, in my uh, 20, I thought it was 21, Stan put more than 21. I recounted it was 22. He was right, more than 21. Uh, but we <clears throat> six times have gone through, uh, four times rather, have gone through Greece and had a couple of days in Greece. And then we have uh, been to Jordan six times, and Egypt four times. And so it's always Israel plus one of those places when we do go somewhere else. But you're always squeezed. A few people, a few have been to Jordan, and when you go over to Jordan, uh, Mount Nebo overlooks the Dead Sea, and it's across from Masada and across from that area, across from Jericho. And you stand on top of Mount Nebo, and you can see Jericho, you can see Jerusalem, a little bit of Jerusalem, you can see a lot. Well, uh, a few years ago, a few decades ago, they were building a new road in Jordan, and boom, they ran across this mosaic. Now, this is not small. It's, it's, uh, they're just showing a little part of it, but it's like a, it takes up a ch the floor, a chunk of a floor in a church there in Jordan today, near Mount Nebo. It's a picture of ancient Israel uh, uh, in the Byzantine period, a few, a few centuries after the New Testament, and it has Be Beersheba on the map, and it has uh, Jericho is very clear on the map. Jerusalem is very clear on the map. It's all written in Greek because it was in the Byzantine period, a very very strong Greek period. But this is uh, we're jumping all the way to Beersheba because originally we were going to do something together before he had to leave, go out of town. And so the very famous expression from Dan to Beersheba. So we showed you Dan, and then this is down at the other end. This is south of Judah, an area called Beersheba. Was there a question? Is it all like desert? Uh, no, actually, it's not. Uh, that, no, it's, uh, since you said that, let me go ahead and explain a little bit about that. On the, pl on the plain, the western plain that runs all the way from Joppa and even southern, uh, runs down to the Gaza Strip. Everybody knows what the Gaza Strip is today. And runs up to uh, just north of uh, Akko and Mount Carmel there. That's all plain and that's all very fertile. And the temperature is uh, always above freezing on the plane, always. And they, so when you, as you ride in the bus on the first trip, you're surprised, oh, there's a banana plantation. Oh, there, there are, and you see oranges all up the coast. In, in, in January, you see things like that. Uh, as you move inland down south, you suddenly start climbing, you're in the foothills like in the Smokies, and you're on your way up to Jerusalem, and all the way from the, the uh, center of Israel, or the eastern part of Israel, there, there's a mountain range that runs there. Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Hebron sit in that mountain range. You're at about uh, <clears throat> 2,600 to 3,000 feet above sea level. That runs all the way through Samaria and then drops off, and suddenly you have in Galilee, Beautiful, beautiful land that looks like, and very rocky, by the way, in um, Samaria, the area of Samaria, now called the West Bank. 
very rocky. But when you get up to Galilee, suddenly you're, you feel like you're in Ohio or Indiana. It's just very green. They have more rain there than any other place in Israel. The Dead Sea has a half inch a year. Uh, and I'll probably forget it, so I'll go ahead and tell this story. On the last trip, we, the last two trips I had, we had an incredible amount of rain in Israel. On uh, the trip about four or five years ago, um, it rained three times as much as all of the first 21 trips together. <laughs> you, all, you take all those trips, we usually will end up with maybe getting no rain, but maybe getting a half day's rain. But it rained on that trip. It rained hard. We, were, we could not see off the top of Mount Tabor. We're going to show you some pictures later off the top of Mount Tabor. It, it rained so much, and they were so happy. So we didn't want to be unhappy about it because they, the Sea of Galilee was down 10 feet. It was down 10 feet. Uh, Curtis said, hang on just a second. Let me just go a little further with that question. So you have a beautiful, and then north of this, and you got a few mountains right in there, scattered out. But at the Sea of Galilee, and uh, Galilee is below sea level. Mount Tabor, the bottom of Mount Tabor is below sea level. And you stand on top of Bet Shan, a mound there, and you're 50 feet below sea level. The Sea of Galilee is 672 feet below sea level. 672 feet below. And so we go in there. We almost never wear coats. That may be a light jacket in Galilee at nighttime, uh, at, at Tiberias or wherever we're staying on the Sea of Galilee. And then when you go north, all of a sudden, you run into the largest hills in Israel called the Upper Galilean Mountains. And to the right of that is the famous Golan Heights. And this is in uh, the, the, the earlier thing of Dan, it's in the middle of Golan Heights. And also very green, surprisingly green. There used to be a lot of desert. Here Beersheba was all desert. But look what's happened. Israel is gradually going to have the whole land green. And uh, there are some places very rocky, like in Samaria, very rocky. And so many of the places, uh, well, like Dan, they got those stones somewhere. Yeah, and so they're just, and Jesus talks about plowing and all that, and so you had to get the rocks out of the way, and a lot of times they took the rocks and built walls with those rocks. Curtis. Which, which valley? I don't know what where what book are you looking in the Bible? Yeah. The uh they tore in a big valley. I go somewhere. It's probably telling you that it's a lush valley. Yeah, lush valley. Yeah, I mean that's what they're they're trying to describe it as a very lush valley. That's what green Yeah, and but that's not the name of it. Okay. And that's probably what they're showing you. Because he had, uh, Curtis showed me a Bible he had last week that had a lot of things in it. This is going to have a lot of things in it. So that gives you at least an idea. When you get, as you're going east and you come to Jerusalem, you're only tw 12 miles west of the, the Dead Sea. Only 12 more miles to go. And we look at Jerusalem when we go uh, over to the eastern part and, and uh, see things there. We stop at a church building, and you can see the top of the Sea of Gal uh, Dead Sea from there. You're exactly 12 miles away. You're 18 miles from Jericho because it's northeast. But you go downhill, you leave Jerusalem, you go 18 miles or 20 miles downhill to Jericho, and you have gone from 3,500, from uh, 2,600 feet above sea level to 800 feet below sea level. You've gone 3,500 feet down in about 20 miles. Get the idea? Okay, I don't see a lot of excitement about that, but anyway, uh, you will. We're going to show you that trip. There's a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho, an old road. See, Keith, you went three times to Israel. Did, on one of those 
one or two of those, did we go down the Jericho Road where the, uh, and looked over at that monastery with the blue top? You remember that? And you can, as you stand there, you can see steeples of Jerusalem to your left, and you can see Jericho to your, to your right. And on that road, it just winds around, and the bus can barely make it on that road. And if you go down the road, it's scary. If you go up, sometimes we come up the road, therefore it's not quite as scary. But down the road, the bus will swing over the valley. I think I told that story, didn't I? I went last, last week. And uh, we had a driver one time named David, David. And uh, Ami, who has been my main guide most of the time, uh, Ami just always said, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Just do the same thing that the driver's doing on these curves. Close your eyes. <laughs> so the, did he ever do that? No, going down, you remember that, Keith, or not? Okay, all right. Uh, on one of the trips, Keith quoted the Beatitudes at the, uh, at the Church of the Beatitudes, the, one of the supposed mounds uh, that, where the speech could be. And you enjoyed that, didn't you, Keith? And we enjoyed you doing it. So this is Beersheba, and see the greenery. It's just, it used not to be that way. My first trip, it wasn't that way. My first trip, we actually, this, the city of Beersheba had all these Bedouins come in and set up tents. And every year that's gotten smaller and smaller. And the last time we went was only, the last time they stopped in the modern city of Beersheba, which is only three miles away, uh, it was only one block. These Bedouins no longer were doing it. But my first trip in 92, we actually went out into the desert. And this uh, sheik had my group, had a very small group of 14, let us come into his tent. And he gave us uh, some of their coffee. Uh, <laughs> it would take paint off your car if you <laughs> used it. Okay, anyway, I think, I, oh, I, here we go. Uh, there's a well at Beersheba there. There's an altar there with the four horns on it. The Bible mentions that, uh, the altar with four horns many, many times. And uh, now, I <clears throat> uh, just wanted to show you a little bit about Dan the Beersheba. Now, this is what we do. We land at uh, Tel Aviv, and uh, on this map here, it's not, because it's not a biblical place, it's Jaffa. Uh, Jaffa, or Jaffa, uh, is where Jonah, in the Old Testament, we see uh, Jonah go down and catch a ship. We'll actually include Jaffa in one of the, uh, in one of the sets of slides. There's a museum there now that you go inside. Uh, if you remember, Simon the Tanner is where Simon Peter stayed. They they have a they show you a building and they say on the door it says Simon the Tanner. Of course we don't know, you know what's made up and what's not. In a case like that, this is kind of a tourist thing, but there's actually a museum there. But we we land just north of uh, northeast of Joppa. We frequently on the trip. Our last stop is Joppa, and we have a fish dinner there. Uh, good place to have a fish dinner. And we've eaten at several different restaurants there. But anyway, you go north, and Tel Aviv used to be a suburb of Jaffa. There are only two large cities in Israel, Jerusalem, uh, and you see different numbers, 600,000, 800,000, you'll see a million, depends on how they count the suburbs, and Tel Aviv. Those are the, Tel Aviv is the commercial capital, Jerusalem is the political, uh, the religious capital. Oh yeah, that, that, that's usually that we have a fish go to a place and eat a fish dinner. Well, what's Tel Aviv? <laughs> well, they have all they have all kind of choices now in the hotels every morning, and that's going to be on another presentation. We're going to show you some of the hotels and some of the restaurant and some of the tables of food. Um, uh, the food um, uh, there are a few people that uh, do not like the oil or allergic to some things, but. Usually there's so many tables spread out, there's so many things, fresh fruit, uh, peppers of all colors, uh, fish, the, uh, even breakfast, <laughs> fish, and so uh, you, just, you just can't, uh, uh, you have to see the tables, and we'll try to have some pictures of that. 
Anyway, as you make the very first major stop, usually we stay all night, not always. Sometimes we just get on the bus from the airplane and head north and tour about half the day and then go to a hotel. But usually, you, we used to always try to land in the 4.30 or 5 in the evening and get up the next morning, get a good night's sleep, and go up to Caesarea Maritima. As you know, there are two Caesareas in Israel, Caesarea Philippi, which is not very far from Dan, and Caesarea Maritima. This is the city that Herod the built, and Herod built, and we are actually going to show you Caesarea Maritima. This is a drawing there because they have restored so many things here. And uh, we always start by going to this theater, uh, this amphitheater. It looks out to the sea, so you could watch the sea. And uh, they have restored part of it. They have a lot of programs there. But uh, this is where we usually, we have our first lecture right outside. There are some, uh, some uh, metal maps uh, uh, with the topography in there that the guide will uh, show the crowd. Then we go inside at uh, Caesarea Maritima here. And uh, then as you leave the theater, you come to a hippodrome. Here is a hippodrome that uh, <clears throat> the left side is gone, but the right side is still there, this hippodrome. And uh, uh, again, this is actually part of Herod's palace. We have found the foundation of Herod the Great's palace here. Remember, he built this city. Most people do not realize what a builder he was. Uh, temple in Jerusalem, palace in Jerusalem, uh, palace at Jericho, uh, palaces all over. He, he built a place called Herodium, where he is, uh, we now have found his tomb in Herodium. And one of the, we, uh, most of my trips there, they had never found it. This man, uh, Dr. Netzer had been looking for his tomb for, oh, 20, 30 years. And between trips one year, he found it, finally found it. They kept looking inside. I remember some college students, when we get into it, you climb up so many steps. And anyway, it's a man-made man mountain and fortress. And so a couple of students popped out of a tunnel, and I said, where have you been? Look, they said, looking for Herod's tomb. Well, the next trip... We got there, they had found Herod's tomb. The reason they didn't find it was because it was built on the outside of the mount. Herod built it so people could see it all the way from Jerusalem, and it was facing Jerusalem. But when the zealots uh, uh, revolted in the, in the 60s and finally AD 70, Jerusalem was destroyed, the zealots were anti-Rome and anti the Herods. They destroyed the tomb, and they covered it up. And so Dr. Uh, Netzar decided, well, why don't we look on the outside? Nobody had thought about doing that, and boom, there it was, facing Jerusalem, and it had been really very, very tall so you could see it. They would broken it down, and his tomb now is in the Israeli Museum, and we'll show you. Uh, those that have been to the Israeli Museum know that. So as you walk along, you just see all kind of things and all kind of periods. It's not only the New Testament period, you see the Crusader period, and uh, uh, you see the, uh, uh, of course, a little bit of, of, you don't see much of modern there, but a few miles away, there is a city called Hadera. That's a very interesting place to go. We go in that mall, so it's, it's like going in Cool Springs or uh, a, a mall in this area, and uh, the signs are only, only in Hebrew in that particular mall of Hadera. Sorry. I said, they, have at that they do. They do. Yeah. Interesting story that now that you bring it up, they started uh, a competing company in Israel called McDavid, and McDonald sued them and won, <laughs> so they had to they had to close it down. But you don't. Uh, Israel has some rules about signs real high, so you can't have a real high sign in Israel. Uh, most of you know Sue McPherson. She goes to uh, the Rivergate congregation now. Uh, uh, Sue uh, is a pilot, and uh, I guess some of you knew that. Uh, Sue is, what is she, four feet nine? 
uh, something like that. She's actually a pilot, and she tried to fly in Israel, but they wouldn't let her. So they, they, they have very strong rules about that. Uh, Sue, actually, uh, you remember the uh, spaceship that went up with the first woman and it blew up? Sue was third in line. She was third in line to go on that trip. And remember, she used to see, teach uh, science at the high school here. Anyway, uh, and she's been on many trips with me. So Sarah Caesarea Maritima, this is the city that Harry built. This is uh, another guide. So I took a picture of this other guide. And we were waiting to read the signs and all that. Uh, and there, there he's standing near a monument there that I'll describe to you in just a second. But uh, right behind him is part of Herod's palace, uh, what's left of Herod's palace. And on this monument he's reading, you have the name of Tiberius Caesar and Pontius Pilate. It's in Latin, this particular one. This city spoke Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, or Aramaic. Uh, it was uh, the capital, and this is where Pontius Pilate would have stayed. Herod had a palace there also. <coughs> but uh, when Pilate had to come down to Jerusalem, then he would do so. Uh, there's Herod's uh, palace right there, what's left of it. And uh, again, people looking around at the sea. The sea is very beautiful here. Just a few miles away, oh, well, someone must have taken it out. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll come back, we'll come back in a second. I thought we had a slide, we may have taken it out because it got pretty long. There are, uh, there is a uh, aqueduct bringing water. Uh, it, it no longer is a Caesarea because it, it, it finally fell down, but just a couple of miles away, you can see it, and uh, it was built by Herod the Great and the Roman engineers. Thank you, Keith. Keith uh, had to go speak somewhere, but he wanted to stay as long as he could. Uh, and so it, it runs, it ran all the way to Mount Carmel, about uh, eight miles, and engineers, because if you start it too low, it's going to run into the ground, but you got to keep it so the water's going downhill. And so if you get it too high, of course, it, the water won't run, and it, it ran all the way to Caesarea, bringing uh, uh, water from a spring on Mount Carmel. And most people don't go to the second one. There's a second one, uh, not as big, about, oh, just a few blocks away. And people don't go, we've been there a couple times. It was built by Pontius Pilate. So there's one built by Pilate and one built by Herod the Great there. Okay, this is uh, Megiddo here. So if we had, <coughs> if we had started... Uh, when you go to Caesarea, sometimes we go north and go on Mount Carmel and take and ride down through Mount Carmel and go to uh, go to Haifa, and then just north of Haifa there's the city of Akko. Uh, this is something most interesting in Israel. They have tried to restore the names of the cities. Uh, so in the Old Testament, when Joshua captured this area, he captured Akko. A CCO on English maps, A K K O is spelled in Hebrew, and sometimes you'll see it A K K O. Well, along came uh, the New Testament period, and uh, the rulers named, renamed it Ptolemaeus. Ptolemaeus, you said, oh, I, I know where Ptolemy, I saw that in the book of Acts. Yes, you did. That's where that Paul comes back, they land at Ptolemaeus. And uh, Ptolemaeus was the main port there, named after Ptolemy. When Alexander the Great conquered the territory, this territory here, uh, a lot of names changed. You probably did not realize it, but look at all the names in Israel that are Greek. It was the Hellenistic period. And so you have uh, cities like uh, around the Sea of Galilee. Hippos is on the southern. That's a Greek name. Uh, it means horse. Uh, there's a city named Philadelphia that people don't realize was there. There are many Philadelphias, but there's one over and now called Amman, Jordan. The city of Amman, Jordan was called Rabath Amman in Old Testament times. 
It's the place where David sent Uriah to meet his death. It's the place where he gave orders to Joab to withdraw. That was called Rabbah Ammon, the chief city of the Ammonites. In New Testament times, it was called Philadelphia, a Greek name. And Jesus is always, people are coming in the New Testament from Decapolis. Well, Decapolis is not a city, it's ten cities. It means they were coming from Bashan, Bashan. they were coming from uh, cities on, in, in Jordan, uh, uh, over to hear Jesus speak, cities on the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee had uh, the, the Greek name. Then you have Philip. That's a Greek name. It's not a, a Hebrew name. That means lover of horses. Phileo is the word for love. Hippos is the word for horse. So run it together, and it means a lover of horses, Philip. Peter, that's not a, that's a, that's a again, uh, is a, a, a Greek form of Cephas. Cephas, meaning a Petra, is the feminine form of Peter. Petra is the city that we'll be showing you slides of the, over in Jordan. It was part of the, uh, uh, the kingdom of Edom. So anyway, uh, so when you go up Caesarea, we can go north, or we can go east over to uh, Megiddo. And so we'll show you some beautiful shots of Megiddo. Here is a wonderful shot of Megiddo as you're facing uh, kind of north right there. To the, if I, We may have a shot of Mount Carmel on this one, but Mount Carmel is just to your left there. But here is the famous city of Megiddo. And you know it more by the Greek name than you do the Hebrew name. The Greek name is Armageddon. <laughs> Armageddon. And many battles took place in the plains there. Josiah, for example, was killed coming up to intercept Pharaoh Necho uh, and uh, taken back to Jerusalem to be buried. But uh, anyway, many battles took place here in, in this place. So that's why it's called Megiddo. When you, archaeologically speaking, 25 levels of cities, 25 levels of cities. Uh, so we'll give you a closer look. Down to the right-hand side, that building with a red top is actually a pretty good-sized building. It's the cafeteria and a, muse and a place where we go, you can, a bookstore, and that kind of thing. Did they farm out there in that time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Galilee is very much like uh, Ohio and Indiana. That's the closest thing I can describe it. And looks like it, too. And uh, I've never been there. I've been there, uh, I have to stop and count now, but I've been about nine of the uh, 12 months. I've been nine different months. Is it green? Right. Yeah, and the biggest and the most famous valley there's the Valley of Jezreel. The city of Jezreel is, uh, we'll show you that one day, is on the southern part of the, city of the Valley of Jezreel, and it's where uh, Ahab and Jezebel <coughs> uh, stole the vineyard of uh, Naboth. And uh, so the whole valley is called, uh, part of the valley is called the Valley of Jezreel. This is a, a gate. Every time they find a new gate, a new outer gate, they make it the entrance for the tourists. <clears throat> and here was the gate at w one time. And then, well, after I started going, they found a new gate. And I think we have that here also. Uh, this is on the uh, uh, nor northeastern part of the mound. And you see the, the woods in the distance. Beautiful, beautiful forest there. And behind that is Mount Carmel. Uh, when you get to the very top of uh, the mound, you can look down a level below, and this is a Canaanite altar. This was an altar that was uh, used to sacrifice even people. And, and if you look, it's a, a dead body. We never checked on him. Uh, one of our students, it was one of, it was one of the students, one of the college students went down there, and, and you almost can't see him, right? Yeah. But he's right in the middle of the altar there. Uh, again, these, uh, there are a lot of stables there. If you remember, Solomon had a lot of stables. And then Ahab, when he came along <coughs> uh, a couple of centuries later, he had a lot of stables there. And so uh, we have all kinds. Here is uh, 
I think this was the latest gate, I think. I thought I had a picture of me in there, but uh, apparently on, well, not on this one. Uh, places like Megiddo and, uh, and other key cities have also uh, steps leading down to tunnels that take you to the water. And uh, here's the tunnel right here. It's still there. We, uh, the modern day people, have built the uh, walkway there to keep you, you know, out of the water. But there's a spring at the end of this tunnel. And what they did was they would uh, uh, disguise the exit outside with trees and bushes and everything. So if some army came, they, they wouldn't know where the water was. But the people inside didn't run out of water because of the spring inside the tunnel. Uh, again, another shot from the top. Uh, and uh, how are we doing on time? Ooh. Uh, this happens to be uh, actually basically the end. I left these two or three slides. Uh, the end. Robert Ball, a uh, preacher from uh, uh, Florida, uh, then got cancer and uh, moved to Decatur, Alabama, and finished his life, died while he was writing his dissertation for his Ph.D., and uh, Robert, actually, you'll see in the picture in just a minute, a wonderful gentleman, died about uh, four or five years ago, and this is one of the hotels that we stay at on the Red Sea uh, as you're leaving. So I just left these shots up there. Uh, the hotels are, we stay in beautiful hotels, and, uh, uh, and including, there's Robert right there, and so Robert... Uh, just at the end of a presentation he made, he had those slides showing you the beautiful, uh, actually, Gulf of Aqaba there. And we'll be showing you uh, uh, whole shots, of, and a lot of you will be in these shots, of the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is uh, only 15 miles long and 8 miles wide at the, at the uh, largest place, uh, but it's very, very deep, and uh, it's a, a beautiful sea, and uh, we'll be giving you a tour of that. So we got a couple of minutes, uh, just about time, a, a question or two, and uh, we're going to show you some, we have some videos that I think you'll like very, very much, but uh, there's just so much to see, and it, it, will, it will change your view of Israel. I... Uh, I'm so glad that I was blessed uh, to take 22 trips. I didn't go until I was 57. And uh, once I went, I got hooked. And so uh, actually about the next uh, oh, 15, 16 years, I went most of the trips then. Any questions? Did you go through the wall built by Nehemiah? Yeah, mm -hmm. the wall built by Nehemiah. Uh, we... Uh, it's just continually on the move, right, Jack? You're just continually on the move, seeing things. Uh, you don't really ride very, a lot unless you're going down to the Dead Sea. Then the ride's a little bit of a, a ride. And the Red Sea is the longest ride, about four hours from the Dead Sea to the Red Sea. So thank you folks for coming. And uh, we'll go ahead, I guess. We're ready to set it up if my Mickey Mouse watches right. It's